So these tiny light supports here, right at the heel of this guy's foot, are supposed to hold on for the whole leg. Uh, yeah, no, they, they couldn't do it. If you haven't heard of Cyberforge Miniatures, you might have heard of Titanforge Miniatures. They're a Polish company that got its start over a decade ago in resin cast miniatures, and in 2019 entered the STL 3D printing game with a Patreon subscription of their own, which they quickly followed up in July of 2020 by launching a new Patreon by the name of Cyberforge Miniatures, this time themed around science fiction. So this company has a pretty big presence in our little hobby. I definitely remember first seeing them back when I got into 3D printing, and I was actually one of the first subscribers to Cyberforge Miniatures and remained with them for a good seven months. I have fond memories of printing and painting Cyberforge minis, but also painful ones of print failures and wasted resin and FEPs. Now at the time, being new to 3D printing, I assumed this was likely due to my settings, maybe the resin I was using, user error, that sort of thing. It would never have crossed my mind as a beginner that it could be the files I bought that were the cause of my headaches. Fast forward to today and all the experience I now have under my belt with resin 3D printing, and Cyberforge Miniatures certainly makes for an interesting subscription to revisit. Were the problems with their files, or was it just me not knowing what the hell I was doing? Perhaps a bit of both? So let's get into what I found when I signed up for the September 2022 release, and we'll start with what I like about Cyberforge Miniatures, then get into my criticisms and, ah, regrettably, I've got some. First up, the price at the door. It's hard to not like getting this many models for just $9.50 Australian. It seems most miniature subscriptions on average are at least 30% dearer than this, so this is cool. But it is a limited tier, so it won't always be that price, and will later be more in line with other popular subscriptions. Cyberforge makes it very easy to understand what you're getting for your money before you ever sign up, with public posts showing their entire release for that month with these very nice renders. When you do sign up, the files are almost certainly already available, Cyberforge appears to be at least always one month ahead on their release schedule because the entire release was made available on the 2nd of September via sync.com download links, and later via My Mini Factory on the 15th. So that's awesome. If you saw my surrogate miniatures review, you might remember I had to wait all the way until the 8th of the following month before I could get the files in that case, which was a little painful. So being on top of their releases like this is great to see. I particularly like the My Mini Factory integration, and they even provide a very generous 50% off discount code which you can use to pick up earlier releases that you might have missed. I'm always going to praise any creator who has a My Mini Factory store tied to their Patreon, because not having to hoard STL files locally on my machine and just being able to grab them from the cloud when I want them is just so much more convenient. However, that's not to say that there aren't other alternatives that are equally good, such as comics games and things and Gumroad. I do know after speaking with some creators that they don't find the My Mini Factory fees very appetizing, and to them I say consider Gumroad instead. While the rewards aren't automatic, you can create a 100% discount code for your patrons per release for them to click on and redeem into their Gumroad account. From my own research, this seems like the most cost-effective way. So anyway, Cyberforge Minis. I like the sculpts, but that's subjective of course and not really pertinent here. This month's release for me personally was exciting because, well, more Harlequins. <laughs> Quick side note on Harlequins, it seems like the last couple of months have been an absolute boon for fans of the faction, as not only did we get the sculpts from Surrogate Miniatures, we also got these from Cyberforge, Dark Jesters from Edge Miniatures, and Arcadian Elves from Heroes Infinite. These are all the ones I know about, but yeah, pretty damn cool. So there's also a nice welcome pack included with an interesting collection of sci-fi themed miniatures, bases, and terrain. Interestingly though, this isn't sent to your My Mini Factory account library along with the monthly release, so you better remember to download this and stash it away somewhere. Which leads me nicely into the criticisms and problems I encountered with Cyberforge miniatures as of September 2022. The biggest disappointment right away after downloading and unpacking the files is that not all the models come pre-supported. Specifically the bases and terrain, they've just left it up to us to deal with. And I'll come back to that later. File organization is mostly good with files sorted into different subdirectories, and they've even included the LYS files too, which I always love to see, but there is a distinct lack of those nice renders I mentioned earlier. How hard would it be for Cyberforge to drop those in there for us, so we can quickly and easily know at a glance what's in each folder? Because going off these names alone generally isn't enough to really know what the hell is in these folders. There is this nice little PDF file though with data sheets for the minis for a game called 
mechanoid extent or Starfinder? I don't know, that's actually not really very clear. So I prepared a plate of the Cyberpunk and Giga-esque minis for printing and imported the sliced file into UV tools to check for unsupported islands. If you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, I have a video all about the most critical aspects for supporting miniatures for 3D printing that you can check out. But long story short, unsupported islands are not ideal and often bad. Regrettably, I did find unsupported islands here, which just sucks. People have asked me before why I don't just use UV tools to try and repair what issues it can by like merging pixels and stuff. And the point for me is I shouldn't have to. There should just be supports where they need to be. And by printing the files as they've been provided, I can get the most accurate picture of how good or bad a miniature subscription is. So despite the unsupported islands, I sent this file to the printer and let it do its thing. The first thing I noticed when I came back to check on the finished print is disconnected tips in a couple of areas. This could mean a few things. Either my settings aren't dialed in for this resin, they are. The creator isn't test printing to verify their work and correct the supports, let's hope not. Or they're overexposing to get successful prints, which uh, that's not great if that's the case. Because if they are overexposing, then they must be having a hell of a time with their support removal, because I really found these supports to be quite a mixed bag. In some areas they were quite tough to remove, and in others were clearly under supported and failed. Other areas were supported just fine. I was pretty careful and patient while removing these supports, but even so, this dude lost a tentacle, this dude some legs, and check this out, I don't know what the hell happened here, but this is <laughs> but this is amazing. This guy's arm broke off and then somehow yeeted itself back up onto the model. Like, look at that! How? So here's the only real failure of the whole print. This dude on his bike, his like just ended up a weird pancaked semi-printed mess. And heading back into Lychee to investigate what happened here, I found that his whole leg is being supported by just three tiny little light supports right at the heel of his boot. How the hell were those three little supports ever going to hold onto all those subsequent layers before it finally connects up over here? How the hell did this get past quality control? So maybe they don't even test print over at Cyberforge Miniatures. That would be shocking, honestly, for a business this size, but my findings in UV tools and now in printing paint a pretty damning picture. But it's not all bad, this print was mostly successful, and I do now have a bunch of cool minis to paint up, so let's take a quick break from the problems with Cyberforge minis, and just enjoy the hobby for a moment, and paint these guys up. The weather was amazing, so of course the airbrushing was not. While I didn't have any issues priming these models black, the Zenithal highlight just ran and pulled in all the recesses looking like shit. Uh, so in order to save these, I decided to drown them in null oil to hopefully darken down those recesses, followed by a dry brushing of white. Look how much better that looks. I just love so much the effect this Zenithal dry brushing has on miniatures, and I'm kicking myself I didn't just do this from the start and save myself the headache with the airbrush. I then went about filling in all the details on these minis using my new favorite hobby tool, Army Painter Speed Paints. I also picked up a couple of GW Contrast paints to try out as well. This is Militarum Green going on here, and just look at that, it looks so sick. But man, a single pot of this stuff costs, funnily enough, exactly the same price as Cyberforge's whole September release. So uh, which one's better value, I wonder? <laughs> This was fun, so I experimented here with a bit of wet blending the speed paints on these xenomorphs, dabbing it up into the undersides, and then hitting the top sides with Grim Black or Gravelord Grey. I really love the way the Grim Black turned out over Absolution Green. This is a winning xenomorph speed paint colour combo in my opinion. Like when I painted the Harlequins, I didn't really give too much weight to my colour choices, just grabbing whatever seemed interesting and picking various details out on the minis. The end result is some look pretty good. Others I'm less happy with, but overall, it's not a bad result for a fast paint job. Feeling experimental, I decided to coat the bases in a dark grey and stipple on some black paint using a sponge. I then tried dabbing on a lighter grey, but wasn't really digging that effect too much, so then I thought I might try painting in little highlights to all the black dots left behind by the sponge, and quickly realised that that would take forever, and I'm probably not a good enough painter to pull that off. So in an attempt to save the bases, I tried just painting quick crisscrossing lines here and there, and to my surprise, I really loved how this turned out. All that was left to do then was to just paint the rims black to tidy everything up.
Right, so minis completed and looking respectable and ready for games, I now turned my attention to the included terrain files. I really like the look of these terrain pieces, they're straight out of the Alien universe, and I think it would be epic to build an entire table with these one day. Maybe. But for now I just wanted to see how I would get on printing a single set. Not off to a good start here. Four out of five of these models have errors that weren't fixed before being released. Annoyingly, there's no pre-supported files included if you wanted to print these in resin, and what's worse is that to print these in filament, you're then going to have to enable supports to get good prints here, because these models do have islands and overhangs. Which begs the question, why not just design them so they don't need supports at all? Or at the very least, include 3MF files with support blockers baked in, so we don't have to waste a shitload of extra time and material to print these off. Here's a short clip from the bonus content video that's relevant to this point. If you intend us to print this in filament, then man, you're gonna have to provide it with some support blockers or just sculpt it so it doesn't need supports. But is that too much to ask? <laughs> like, look at um, forbidden prints. Like, if, if the gold standard for fucking uh, f FDM filament printed terrain is forbidden prints, that guy is amazing. Um, just all of his stuff, if there's any overhangs or whatever, he just builds, he just sculpts in supports and makes it part of the detail. Um, so literally everything that guy has made, you can print it with supports turned off. And it's just, it turns out glorious. It's so good. Um, everyone should just do that. <laughs> you can watch all 29 minutes of that video by buying me a coffee. It's a great way to support the channel and help me continue making these videos. There's even a Discord server, and you get all my terrain STL files, support blockers included. So please do check that out. Your support will make all the difference, and I hope to see you over there. So yeah, if you've ever placed support blockers in Cura, you know how frustrating that whole workflow can be. So in a way, it's probably actually easier to just sculpt in supports where needed as detail, and I wish Cyberforge had made that effort here one way or the other. So given these files are just provided unsupported, and how much I dislike adding support blockers, I opted to print these on my Mono X printer by placing them flat on the build plate and adding supports to all the islands, validating with UV tools as I went to make sure I didn't miss any. This took a while, and it makes me wonder, how many other people would bother or even know how to do this? There's a lot of people getting into resin 3D printing these days, and if I were brand new and trying to print these files, this could prove a significant barrier to printing. Ah, <laughs> uh, always check you got enough resin, folks. For fuck's sake. Guess we're trying that again. What's, what's going on there? The magnet? It's fucking hanging off. Jesus. Okay, yes, that's my fault, not Cyberforger's. And the warping on the bottom is likely caused by my BQ flex plate sagging under the weight of all that resin. So I think this would have actually printed fine otherwise. But still, why am I having to do all this work and make these decisions when I've paid for these files? It boggles the mind. And I can hear you shouting at me that they're supposed to be printed on an FDM machine, so... Okay, let's do that then. There's enough overhangs here that turning supports on would significantly increase the print time and material used, not to mention all the scarring those supports will leave behind. And given that I'd rather chew glass than add support blockers, I printed this piece without supports so we can see exactly why it needs them. You can see here these little noodles of filament just hanging in the air there. The wavy extrusions and gaps. This is not a great result in some places, but I guess from arm's length it kind of just looks like busted wires coming out of the walls. I didn't want to throw away the failed resin prints because they still kind of look interesting. So I gave everything a really speedy paint job, priming them black, giving a white zenithal dry brush, followed by spraying Absolution Green from below and Gravelord Grey from above. Despite the failures here, I think these look pretty cool, and I'll probably use them in some games at some point. So, uh, yeah. That's Cyberforge Miniatures, September release for 2022. Pretty disappointing results. And it's kind of interesting to discover the same sorts of issues present that I was having way back when I first got into 3D printing and trying to print Cyberforge Minis. Being able to spot the problems now, I can really see why I struggled with them as a beginner, and I can't help but think a video like this would have been very helpful for me back then. And so my hope is it'll prove helpful for some of you who are just now getting into resin 3D printing. Running into the problems I did as well kind of just took the wind out of my sails for printing any of the Harlequin proxies for this release. 
Unfortunately for Cyberforge miniatures, my findings put them squarely in the B tier. In addition to the minor inconveniences of A tier, B tier creators now include major hurdles such as unsupported files, poorly pre-supported files, or significant errors in the models that require more advanced repairs with specialized 3D tools. A creator who is placed in the B tier is not recommended for beginners. Journeymen and experts be warned, you're going to need to bring your expertise and experience to get these models across the finish line. Not for newbies, experience required. From no pre-supported files at all, to inconsistently supported minis, be prepared to put in work to get the most out of your Cyberforge miniatures subscription. I praise them for their price at the door, but maybe really this is just a case of you get what you pay for. And I hope to Godzilla that their flagship subscription Titanforge miniatures isn't this rough. So let me know if you want to see that review, I guess. Lastly, it looks like Cyberforge miniatures are expanding their releases starting in August with the introduction of three distinct model ranges per release, similar to what we've been seeing from One Page Rules. While on the surface this seems like incredible value, assuming they don't also raise the price, I do worry that if problems like these are getting through with a smaller release, how many more will there be for a larger one? I've got at least one more Patreon review filmed already, so expect to see that here soon. If you want to see the pre-release video for that and other bonus content, please do consider visiting the link in the description where you can become a channel member, get Discord access, terrain SDLs, and help this channel grow. Many thanks for your subscription, and I'll be back soon with another.